Okay, well, thank you for uh, attending today's webinar. Today is on contact management. We're uh, going to do some role playing. We're going to start scratch uh, with a brand new client and go from the very beginnings. You just get your client, you just enter a search, um, you save a search for them as an auto email, and, uh, and you go do some more listings, you send them some properties, and you go and change the price of the searches. and. And then all the way to the very end, um, and you want to stop that auto email and, and, and inactivate your, your client and stuff like that. Okay, So, so with that said, uh, let's say I, I've got a brand new client. Her name is Jenny. Okay, Jenny uh, Sanderson, uh, in fact, is a good friend of mine. So uh, I'm just going to use her and, and just pretend that she's a client of mine. And the first thing you could do is go into Matrix and add... Jenny to your contact list okay so uh, as you go into matrix contacts and I'm just going to go down here to the bottom and add a new client I'm going to start with uh, Jenny Sanderson okay uh, email address uh, remember your clients need an email address and if they don't have one then either give them your email address or I like to do this. If Jenny Sanderson didn't have an email, what I like to do is just type in uh, Jenny Sanderson at noemail.com. Okay, uh, that's what I like to do. So, uh, but she does, or I'm going to pretend that she does, and I'm going to type in her uh, email address as this one. Actually, that's my email address. And uh, I'm using that because after we do several things for her, I can log into my Yahoo email uh, account and get those emails from Jenny. And uh, so you can see what she's been getting. In fact, this is a great way for you guys to practice on your own. Just go in there and type in uh, either fictitious people or, or your spouse or someone like that and just add them in there and give them your other email address. And then kind of role play with it there a little bit. Uh, I could type in her husband's name. Okay. Or I could, um, if I hit show all fields, I could come down here. I could have typed in Kevin's name down there. Or maybe her kids' names down here. Okay. And instead of dear uh, Jenny and Kevin, I could say hi, Jenny and Kevin, or hello, Jenny and Kevin, or enter a custom salutation, such as howdy, Jenny and Kevin. Okay. I could type in her street address or city, state, zip code. I could type in... Um, company and, and, and stuff like that here, and but I'm just going to save this here, okay? So I did the first thing. I added Jenny and Kevin uh, to my contact list, and when I open that up, you'll notice there's nothing down here under Jenny and Kevin's name, just details. If I click on details, you'll see their home information with their phone number in there, okay? So next thing I probably want to do is do a search for, for them, okay? Uh, in fact, they've got a couple searches that they'd like for me to do for them. So I'm just going to get started off, and I'm just going to do some basic searching. I, I don't want, we're not really going to get into much more detailed searching in this one since we did that one earlier today, and it was recorded, so you can watch that one also if you need help on doing such more detailed searching, you know, maps and all that stuff. So I don't want to waste all of our time doing uh, advanced searching here. So I'm just going to come in and say she wants something in residential. And she wants something uh, single family. I'll take out contingent. I'll uh, say she's looking, or they are looking for something in uh, Canyon uh, Gates. And we'll say it's, uh, as you know me, if you've seen any of my classes, I like looking for million dollar properties. Um, we'll say at least uh, four bedrooms or more. Okay. And we'll say at least three total baths or more. Okay, and we're down to 14 matches. I go to results. I kind of look at these, and they look good. Okay, so what I want to do is just save this for Jenny and Kevin. And so I come down here to the bottom. I hit save, and I do new auto email. I come up here. I look for uh, Jenny and Kevin Sanderson. Uh, it's going to... As you know, it's going to go to my Yahoo email address, so I don't really need to copy me because it's going to my Yahoo one, 
but I think in the beginning it, it's always really good to copy yourself on, on new emails, auto emails, so that way you can kind of get a feel for this. But after a while, that's just up to you if you do it or not. Uh, subject, well, if they're looking for Canyon Gate, so I like to call this one Canyon uh, Gate over uh, 1 million. Okay. There's a welcome message here. Now, the welcome message will be the first message they get. Um, I like to change this message. You can change this also. So if you don't like that message, type in your own. Please click on the link below to activate uh, the search. And if you don't know uh, by now, but we've got videos underneath the uh, help tab in Matrix. In fact, let me scroll back up here a little bit. And let me move my webinar thing out of the way. Um, I won't go there, but under the help tab, we have videos. And one of the videos is, is, is a video that you could share with your clients. And you could uh, come into here and uh, copy and paste that link into here so that way they can uh, watch uh, the video. And it's a five-minute video explaining to them how they could use their um, their uh, client portal because that's what happens here when when this search goes out and they click on the link that's in this message they're going to get a link to their portal and then they're going to see those listings that are on there and it's up to them to save it or reject it or uh, leave you notes and things like that and you're going to see that here in a minute but but you could copy and paste that uh, message out there okay uh, and whatever else if you like or don't like about this message make it your own and if I don't save this here, down here at the bottom, as a, a default, this will only be good for this one search for Jenny and, and Kevin. But if I want this to be permanent for anyone that I save a search for from here on out, I can hit that link and set it the current message as my default uh, welcome message. Okay. Now, once Jenny and Kevin click on this link, uh, I could do a recurring message here. And it's right now it's really short and sweet that says, hey, something's changed or something, you know, there's new out there, go look at it. But you might want to put a reminder, uh, don't, don't forget to uh, save, reject, or uh, leave notes on listings. I think that's a good reminder to do out there too because they're going to see this message every day. And in fact, that, that video you do, you could even copy and paste that link into here and then that way uh, if they didn't see it on that first one, uh, they'll see that reminder of that video that you have out there and they can see it again. Okay. Uh, and then I can say this as my recurring default message too for them. Okay. So I did change it here. I'm not going to save it as a default. So you're going to see it when I get this uh, message on this Canyon Gate over a million dollars when I open it up for Jenny and Kevin. You're going to see that I've changed that message. Okay, but I didn't make it permanent though. Come down here, you see my signature. Uh, hopefully everyone's got their signature changed and their banner and stuff. If not, you might want to watch one of those other videos that will talk about that on there. Uh, ASAP, once a day in the morning, once a day in the PM, or twice a day. Uh, I'm actually going to make it ASAP right here. In the searching webinar earlier today, I did talk about the concierge mode. I might come back in later and, and see if we can uh, do that during this one, but we'll see what we do. Okay. Just remember the concierge mode is when you don't want them to get it first. You want to look at it before it goes to them. That's what the concierge mode is. But in this situation, I'm just going to send it to them. As soon as it finds a new match, send it to them. And I'm going to hit the uh, Save button here. And that new auto email for Jenny and Kevin called Canyon Gate over a million dollars is saved. They were just sent an email uh, welcoming them to the portal with that message that I have there. Now, where do I find this? Actually, two places. I find it either under My Matrix, under Contacts. And now I go back to Jenny and Kevin's uh, name here. Now I see, instead of just details, now I see auto emails. And now what I see here is Canyon Gate over a million dollars. And notice that circle is white, which means they have not yet clicked that link. Let me go back up here and um, show you. I could also find it under auto emails. And if I come down here for Jenny and Kevin, I click on it. You'll notice it's uh, here too, it's white. Okay. Now, 
it'll stay white until they click on it. They have 80 days to click on that link to activate it. Okay. Now, I'm not going to wait 80 days for them to click on that link. I'm going to give them a, a, a few more days here or maybe a, another day or so, however long you want, and follow back up with Jenny and Kevin. Okay, if they still haven't clicked on it, ask them, you know, is everything okay? Uh, because what you could do, you could resend them that welcome message to it again. Okay, um, but stay on, just stay on top of this. Uh, keep an eye on it, and you'll notice uh, when it turns green, like this one up here. Uh, but as soon as they do, it'll turn green, and it'll never shut off as long as they're looking at it at least one time in 80 days. Uh, if they don't look at it in 80 days, you'll get a little uh, message saying that we had to turn it off, and it'll be in red. And instead of my message right here, it'll say disabled due to inactivity. Okay, This one I'm pointing at on my screen is disabled by the agent. I disabled it. Okay, uh, So this one right here is uh, it's still uh, it's activated. I'm just waiting on them to click on it. Okay, And you'll see that here in a second. Uh, okay, so they get it, and um, I tell you what, let, let me do some other emails to them. Let's say there's a, a listing, and let's say it was at uh, 7 uh, Sable Ridge, okay? Did a search for it. I found it. It's an active listing. There's also a uh, expired listing here. And let's say they asked me about this one. I said, yeah, okay, let me email it to you. So I put a check mark next to it. And I come down here to the bottom, and I hit email. And I'm going to send this to Jenny and Kevin. Uh, I could blind carbon copy me, which is not a bad idea here. Uh, subject here, I'm just going to say, um, since it's one listing, I'm going to say it's 7 Sable Ridge. Okay. And uh, here is that listing you asked about. Okay. And it's going to put my signature down here at the bottom. Okay. Uh, now I'm just going to send this. Now you notice when I sent this, never did it ask me after I hit email, which report do I want them to see this in? Because it's sending these listings to them on their portal. So they get to choose which listings they see on their portal. Okay. So uh, so that's that's the first thing I want to make sure you know, that when you hit this email button and you email to a client, they see it on their portal, and they get to choose which views to see, which you will see here in a few minutes here, okay? Uh, and then I could say, well, you know, maybe a, a day or two went by, and they asked about another listing. And they said this one was 7930 uh, uh, Castle Pines. Do a search, get it, I found it. So I put a check mark here, and I'm going to email to them again. I hit email, I pick their name, Jenny and Kevin. Uh, I think it's a great idea to type in the address if you're just sending them one uh, property, 7930 uh, Castle Ridge. Okay. If I send them about four or five, I might want to say four listings for you or, or something like that. Uh, try to be descriptive because you'll see why it's important what you name it uh, here in a minute. Here is this listing you asked about okay and I'll send it and once again it doesn't ask me which view for them to see it because they will see it when I go to their portal there okay so uh, I do that um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and see if I've got that email yet from them. Okay, that's why I was kind of waiting here for a few minutes because that email goes out and uh, you get it within uh, five ten minutes. So let me log into my Yahoo here and see if I got that email yet from them or for them. And right here, yes, I did. Uh, Canyon Gate over a million dollars, and they actually got the Sable Ridge one, and they actually got the email for uh, uh, Castle Ridge. See right here. So when I click on that uh, uh, Canyon Gate, now they got, remember I changed that uh, salutation to Howdy, Jenny and Kevin, and I said, welcome to the portal. Then I said, please click on a link below to activate this search. Well, there's the link. And if I would have copied and pasted that link for that video that's under the help tab, uh, I could have put a little message that, you know, hey, need help navigating around your portal. Watch this uh, five-minute video about it. 
Okay. So what they're going to do, or hopefully they're going to click on this link here, and it's going to take them to their portal. Now this view that you're seeing, uh, they probably shouldn't see that view first. Uh, that view was uh, because I left it the last time I was looking at my portal on my computer here, it was that map view, okay? Uh, this should be the, the first view that they see, okay? So remember I had 14 houses, and uh, so this should be the default uh, view that they see when they first open it up. It may, uh, I can't guarantee that there, so let me explain the worst situation if it is not this thumbnail view. Uh, it could be this uh, display, it could be the single line view, okay? But I'm really hoping that I'm wrong on that. I, I'm really hoping because I, I did, uh, we have changed it and we said use the thumbnail view, which should be the default view. But nonetheless, even if it's the worst case scenario and it's the single line view, uh, the very first thing I say in that video, or you could mention to them, is that they can change the display and change it to whatever view they like. I even kind of like this gallery view here. Gallery view kind of puts two thumbnail views side by side here so they can see more properties on one page. Um, but if they leave it on this view or if they change it to, let's say, another view such as the uh, split view with the map on one side and the properties on another side, they can, uh, they can lock it down this way too. Okay, and it'll it'll stay this way. So as long as they don't change it, when they come back, this is the view they see. Okay, uh, but there's just several views here. Uh, if they click on that MLS number right here, it takes them to a full view for that listing, and then they can always hit the uh, back button, and it just takes them right back to that previous view. They can also click on that MLS number. And here, they're looking at the second one of 14, and they could actually scroll through and look at all the listings this way. And then when they get to a nice uh, picture they like, they can just click on it, and they can see uh, the view of it there. And then they can scroll through and look at the photos this way here. Hmm, pretty cool house. I like it. Okay. Then they can close this down. Uh, now, uh, and they can also put a check mark here also and check it there. I'm going to go, uh, notice up here, uh, it says Canyon Gate over a million dollars. Okay, if they open this up, look at this. Remember, I emailed them two other emails here. See right there, uh, Castle Ridge and Sable Ridge. Okay, so let me close this down here, and let's say um, you know some time went by, and now they got Sable Ridge. They they were asked about it, so I clicked it. I cl opened it up, and I said, here's that listing you asked about. So uh, now if they click on that listing, guess what the listing they see? And look at what view they see because it remembers what view you, they left it at. So if they left it at this view, that's the view they see. So I'm going to go up here and change it back to that uh, gallery view. Okay. But that's just that one listing on uh, Sable Ridge. Now, now they can click on Castle Ridge right here and see it. But I'm just going to say days go by. Um, and then they get another email from me, Castle Ridge. They open it up. Here's that listing. They click on it, and now they see Castle Pines. Okay. Uh, so now they've got a, an email from me on May 26. They got another one from me on May 26 for that listing. But they also have an auto search, and that's a criteria. Okay. Now this is a search criteria where those are specific houses that I sent them. Okay, so that's a big difference there because Canyon Gate will always fluctuate on the houses that are in there based on what's currently active on there. So their search criteria here is producing these 14 houses. So if they like this house on title list circle, what they should do, see over here there's a heart, there's a light bulb. So if they like this house and want to keep tabs on it no matter what, no matter if it sells or expires and stuff, they should save it as one of these options here because if they don't save it and this house sells or expires or even changes to contingent because I'm not looking for contingent properties for them. I'm only looking for active. So if it changes to contingent or pending or something else, I won't, uh, they won't, they won't see this house anymore. Okay. So it's very important that if they like it, just encourage them to save it as one of these ways here and, uh, and it'll stay on this list. And if they see this one on Canyon View, and let's say they keep getting tired of seeing this, like why do you keep sending this to me out there? 
Uh, well, then encourage them to use the trash can right there. And what that does is, now your webinar thing might be covering this up, but there's a little trash can item up here on the top right. Okay, and that's where it throws these uh, categories into. Uh, so what they should do, hopefully, is just uh, start rejecting the houses they don't like and um, and then start saving the houses they do like here. Okay, Because what that will do as they uh, save um, listings or they reject listings, once this gets refreshed, remember there's 14 listings right here. So let me change this to Castle Ridge and let me go back to Canyon Gate. Now there's only seven houses here. Wasn't there 14? Yeah, but they rejected seven of them. See them up here in the trash can? Seven of them were rejected. They have one favorite and two possibilities. Well, they stayed right here. And what you could also do is encourage them to save notes, leave notes on here. Why they like this one? Um, uh, like the neighbor hood very uh, very ooh, if I can spell today very quiet okay so they're just leaving notes and it's like a little reminder to themselves or to you or to both of you as to why they like it or why they don't like it and things like that and they can hit that notepad and just closes it right back up there okay uh, so encourage them to do it on all these properties here and then um, as they do all this stuff, I'm just going to close this here. When you go back in the matrix and you log in the matrix, you're going to see recent portal visitors. Let me pull this up to the top. Jenny and Kevin Sanderson, they went to it today at 3.18 p.m. And guess what they did? They saved a, a note and they saved three listings, you know, as a combination of favorite and the hearts. I could click on that and I can see what the... Uh, favorite and the two uh, light bulbs are and I can see where that note is at right there too and see it's got that little star on there uh, that means that star I have not yet seen that message yet so I could click on it and uh, and see what Jenny and Kevin left and with the time they left that message there I could reply to this message if I want to I can say um, how about making an offer or how about this um, do you want um, me to set up a showing? Okay. I don't think this is the best way to communicate with your clients. Okay. Uh, I think picking up the phone is always the best way to communicate with them. Uh, maybe even emailing them or whatever, but you could communicate this way. I just don't think this is the best way because they don't get an email. The only time they see this message is when they log back in. Okay, see I just left that message there. So when they log back in and they open this up, they're going to see they have a new message right here. So that's the only way they really see it. So if they click on it, they're going to see it. And if they click on that notepad there, do you want to see the setup is showing? So like I said, I don't think this is the best way to communicate with them. Okay. Um, but uh, just want to make sure you knew that there. So you can leave each other's notes back and forth on this here. Okay. Um, okay. So let's see here. Uh, let's say they, uh, they want me to do, well, let's, let's say they want me to set up a showing. Remember that seven Sable Ridge or that one. Okay. Remember that one they left me a note on? They liked the, uh, the quiet, uh, let me open this up, like the quiet neighborhood. Let's say they do come back to me and they said, uh, and it's on 86, 21 title list. Let's say they come back and say, yeah, let's go look at it. And I I, uh, I look at the showing time, a uh, showing instruction. I call the agent and I set up a showing uh, uh, instructions for them, you know, and we set up a time and date and we go see it. I want to, what I like to do, remember the carts? Let me go back to the home page. Um, we have carts in Matrix. Fusion, we only had one folder, and that was a generic folder that you had to dump any and all listings into one folder. In Fusion, excuse me, we actually have a cart for every single contact that you have. Okay. What I like to use the carts for, I like to add listings uh, that I show them. And if I go under my Matrix contacts here, you're going to notice that every contact has a cart, okay? 
they're in your contact list, they have a cart. Now, Jenny and Kevin don't have any listings in their cart until I start putting them there. So what I'm going to do is when I do a search for that listing on 8621 title list and they want to go see it, I'm going to check mark that listing. I'm going to go to carts and I'm going to add that to Jenny and Kevin Sanderson's carts. Now, they don't have any listings in their cart, but when I check that one and I add it to their cart, now they have one listing in their carts. Okay? Now, the thing is, just because I put that listing in their carts right here doesn't necessarily mean Jenny and Kevin can see that on their portal. Now, I know they can see that on their portal because they left me a note on it. Remember down here, they left me a note, so I know they see it on their portal. But just because I throw it into their cart doesn't necessarily mean they can see it on their portal. Here's the question. Have I ever emailed that listing to them? And yes, I have emailed it to them. So if I've emailed it to them, it is on their portal. If it says never under the email column, that means I have never sent it to them and they cannot see that listing on their portal. So the cart is a way for me to keep track of everything I have shown them and I can see the cart and the cart is for me. The portal is for your clients. So if you want the clients to see it, just email them listings. If I want to uh, save it or record it, then I need to put it in my cart. Okay, so it's a tracking mechanism. Okay, um, so let's say I get back from showing them that that listing on uh, title list circle. I might want to come back, go to their cart, and leave a note as to uh, showed on five twenty six sixteen um, uh, rooms were on the small side uh, kitchen um, was really nice really nice but the layout of the house was uh, not to their liking okay now just remember when I'm leaving these notes they can see these notes, your clients can. So preferably, I'd have them go back and leave the notes as what they thought about it. But if nothing else, I can at least put the date and time that I showed it to them as a reminder that when I showed it to them. But uh, I can leave notes as to what they thought about it, but they should too. Okay? Uh, okay, so that's what I want to show you the carts for. And let's do another search for them. Okay, let's go back up and do... Uh, uh, another search. This time I'm going to do another area. We'll do uh, uh, seven hills. Okay. We'll do single family. We'll just do active. We'll do uh, detached. We'll do million dollars again plus. Okay. And we'll do at least uh, five bedrooms or more and do our results. And I'll save it. And I'll save it as a new auto email form and I'll link it to them again. And I'll call this one Seven Hills SFR uh, over 1 million. Recurring message. Now remember, I didn't save that default message, so that's why it went back to the beginning here. And then uh, I could enable it as concierge, which means I have to look at it before it goes to them. I'm just going to say ASAP here and I'm going to go ahead and Say, uh, save it and send it to them. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to give that a second for that to go through. Okay. So, uh, let's say they change their mind on their price range for that canyon gate. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go back to their contact record. I'm going to open up Jenny and Kevin and go to their auto emails. Now, see this? Now, they got two auto emails here. And watch this. See the one on Canyon Gate? Now it's a green circle because they've already opened it. Okay, it's active. Now they haven't opened the second one yet, the Seven Hills yet. Okay, so that one's still waiting for them to activate. Uh, portal activity. 
see they've they can see all the stuff that they've added a note they discarded some listings they added a possibility added a favorite discarded some so they're already getting some uh, activity going on here okay and I can see the three emails that I've sent them here okay uh, but they changed their price on that auto email on Canyon gate instead of over a million dollars they want to drop it down a little bit Okay, maybe they were just dreaming at, at first here. So when I come back in, I'm going to hit uh, criteria. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change that price. Instead of over a million dollars, I'm going to make it from um, 800000 to $1.1 uh, $1 million. Let's see what our results are. Okay, I got six matches now. So they, they still want over a million, but they want to not that far over a million, but they want to drop it also under 800000 so now I'm going to hit save because I made a, a change. When I hit save, it gives me one more chance. Now I, because if it just saved it, okay, I still to have the same name here, over a million dollars. So it's a good thing. Now I can say um, uh, Canyon Gate uh, between, uh, let's say, um, dollar sign 800 and 1.1 million okay now it's also going to send them this message here letting them know that I've revised their criteria let me know if they have any questions I've revised your criteria um, and I could just put in a message here saying um, I changed your price on the search to between uh, 800 and 1.1 1 .1, 1 .1 million okay just so they know because I, I think that's you know you need to communicate with them that they're doing this okay so then I come down here and I save it they just got another email saying that their price criteria was changed on that listing there okay now remember they also got the email to uh, seven hills there too okay so uh, so then if I go and open up that email from them, they get, uh, let me see if I can, I'm not sure if I refresh this or not. There we go. Um, looks like it hasn't sent me that new one yet. So they should get it here any minute now. Okay, so I'll come back and check that. Um, okay, let's say I do a CMA for them. Let's say they're also thinking about selling their house. Okay. So what I do is I go and do a search, residential, I do uh, active contingents uh, pending and solds, single family, detached, and let's just say they live in Anthem by a chance, okay? And uh, they've got uh, four bedrooms, they got three total baths here, okay? And they got a square feet of uh, over 300, oops, a square feet of over 300,000. So I want to find other comparable houses just like theirs. In fact, let me make it uh, over 200,000. See if I get some matches here. Okay, well, let's make it over 2,500. Okay. Uh, okay, I got 22 results. Now I do is a search. Now I'm doing comps for them. Okay, I'm trying to help them find uh, comparable properties. We'll get into CMA tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. We have a webinar tomorrow morning at 9. Um, I'm just going to do a quick CMA for them. Okay, uh, but this would be the same thing if I did a full CMA or, or a quick CMA. So I'm going to come in and pick some active listings, show them what their competition is. And then I'm going to pick some solds here. To show them what their competition is, or uh, show them what the houses that are selling in their ranges for. Okay, so I got three actives, three solds. Uh, I could do a full fledged CMA here, but I'm just going to do a quick CMA. In fact, if I hit the quick CMA, it'll open it up. Okay, there it is. Uh, I can go over here. I can download it or print this off. But watch this. I want to email it to them. Okay. Now, if I hit email, which you think you, you, you would do, okay, normally you would think, well, just hit email and send this to them. But remember when I said you hit email? Okay, it's not going to email to them because it's going to put those six listings on their portal for them. Okay? And what I could do, I mean, I could do that. I could go and send this to them, and I could title this um, comps, um, 
comps for your house. Okay, and I could say uh, here are three active listings and three sold listings. Okay, so I could I could do that if I like. Okay, I don't think this maybe is the best way, I, and, but like I said, I could. Okay, and it's there. I'm going to hit cancel though. Let me show you the other way to email stuff to your clients. It's not under the email button. It's actually under the print button. Okay. When I hit print, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to pick the quick CMA report right here. Okay. So when I pick the quick CMA reports, I could print this out if I want to, but you'll notice I also have an email PDF button right here. So when I hit the email PDF button, it's going to open it up, and I'm going to type in their name, blind carbon copy me if I want to, give it a subject, uh, quick CMA of your uh, house, okay? And then I could say uh, here are uh, three list, three active listings, active listings, and uh, three sold listings uh, like your house, okay? So I come down here, I email this to them, I send it to them, okay? So that is now on their portal also. So now if I come over here, I go, okay, now I just got that new uh, email, Seven Hills, over a million dollars. Remember I said uh, I sent them a new link here? They open this up. Now they see that, that search for Seven Hills that I sent them. If I open this up, they also see Canyon Gate, but notice the price has changed between 800,000 and uh, a million, and now they're only seeing four because those other ones dropped off, okay? They can open this up. Uh, here soon, they're gonna see another email. It says uh, CMA, uh, quick CMA of their house. They're gonna see that here uh, in a few minutes. So uh, let's see if I can go back to my results and see if I get that email yet. Yep, here we go. Quick CMA of your house. So Jenny opens it up and it says, or Kevin, here are three active listings and three sold listings like your house. So when I click on it, they're going to see this. They're going to see that quick CMA with my banner at the top. They're going to see, and they can zoom in on this and see those three active listings with the prices and stuff. They can see the three solds with the uh, calculations of them down here too, okay? And there's the total of all six houses. So I could have explained that in that message what this all said too, if I, if I needed to, okay? Um, so that's their messages. Now, if they go back to their portal and they go to their welcome page, Here's that quick CMA of their house. There's the one house on uh, Castle Ridge. There's the one uh, house on Sable Ridge. There's the notes we've been saying. Uh, I left the notes, or they left the note, and I responded uh, with my notes here. Over here, what you're seeing, see here's the two, Seven Hills, and then here's that one on Canyon Gates. Uh, if they go back to the property, remember if they open this up, they can see Canyon Gate right here. They can open this up. They can see, um, they should see that CMA in here, okay? Maybe not, okay? Maybe not. Uh, I think that that CMA is only, I, I do stand corrected, that CMA is only here on this Welcome tab. As you can see, they get two tabs, a Properties tab and a Welcome tab. That's where that CMA is. If I had emailed those six houses, remember that first email I sent? I said, well, I wouldn't do it this way, but if I had sent them the six houses and I would have labeled it um, six houses, uh, you know, like yours or you know, comps of your houses, they would have that third email there. But I sent it to them as a PDF form out there. Okay. Uh, so going back, let's see what else. Let me um, now if I go back to my home page and I review. Okay, I think I already showed you this. That's how you keep track that they've been viewing this. And it says recent portal visitors. This here, it'll stay on this list. People on your list will stay on there for uh, about two weeks, I believe it is. Okay. Uh, I can always go under my matrix contacts. And now when I open up Jenny and Kevin, 
Now they've got uh, portal activity. They got two auto emails, which we know what they are. Okay, that one there should also be uh, green here too. Um, might be a little time delay on that one there. Uh, sent emails. In fact, I, I think that's because I have to log out, log back in, and you'll see it change there. Uh, there's all the sent emails. See that CMA I sent them, so I can pull it back up for my reference here if I need to. Uh, details uh, or portal activity here you can see added a notes all that stuff here now also something they can do on their portal okay there's that new message remember that Canyon gate I changed the price I change your price on the search between a million okay so if they click on it they see it there and I click on that okay uh, what they can do your clients can do their own searching okay uh, what they can do is open this up. They can put in their price range. I think it's remembering this price range because I used it in the past. That's why uh, when they open it up, they would never had done a search before. And uh, now they don't get all kinds of fancy tools here, but they just kind of pick some basic stuff. And, uh, and then they can hit search. And then what they're doing really is they get to navigate this uh, map here. And uh, they can uh, uh, change this around. And as they move this around, they're seeing all the results. But what they can do, they can also do their own circle or a rectangle. And they can say, well, show me all the houses here in that search. Okay, or make it bigger and stuff. And now what they can do, they can save their own searches. And they can say, uh, uh, Jenny's ideal location. Okay, so Jenny saved her own search, and that's what she named it. Jenny saved it that way. Okay, so if Jenny saves her own searches, see up here it says Jenny's ideal location, so she can uh, do her own searches. Now, when I go into Matrix, and let me go back to the home page here. Um, okay, there's Jenny and Kevin, but if I go back to uh, their contact, pull them up, now they should see, you should see a second one, portal searches here, okay? In fact, I might need to log out real quick and log back in. Let's see if I can refresh this here for you. Uh, click on it again. Then I'm going to go to uh, Matrix. And if I go to contacts, Jenny and Kevin, now see that one search they saved right here? And it's called Jenny's uh, ideal location. So you can keep track of what they sent or what they've saved themselves. Here's their two auto emails. See now they're both green because they both looked at it. Uh, sent emails. Remember I sent them that revised uh, uh, search and I've also sent them a uh, CMA on here so it's there so everything I'm doing for them is always recorded right here as I'm doing this here um, okay let's see here um, changing search criteria turning okay I'll, I'll turn it off now and I just want to make sure I covered a lot of situations that I did. Okay, well, let's say they bought a house now. Okay, so probably what I want to do now is stop it. Okay, they bought a house, and, and I, I just want to go into their auto emails and put a check mark next to it. And I could delete those searches. And if I delete it, it'll be gone, and that's it. I don't like to do that. Now, if, if, if they haven't bought a house yet, and let's say they're just taking a break, for a while, maybe they're going on vacation, they want me to pause these uh, auto emails, I could disable it. And when I hit OK, it's disabled, okay? I disabled them. So if they go to their portal, they probably won't see those listings there or those searches. Let's see, yeah. Um, yeah, I clicked on an old link. I think that's why here. Well, shouldn't have turned off their portal, though. That's the thing. It shouldn't have turned off. That's something I need to look at because if I disable it, it should have just disabled uh, the searches. See right here? There we go. That's the way it should look. It should have just disabled those two searches but not those uh, 
extra emails or that one search they did, okay, that should still be there. They're not seeing those two searches because I disabled them. I turned them off, okay? And if they go back to the welcome page, they don't see those over here because I turned them off. So if I go into matrix here and I check on them and I go to settings and I want to turn them back on, okay, I hit enable and I save it. Now they just got sent that email again. And let me do the same thing down here. Uh, go to settings, uh, move this down a little bit. Okay, I enable it and then I save it again. Okay, so now it's back on and it's now up to them to get that email from me which might take a few minutes here to get, and now they'll be turned back on. So I just want to show you that turning it off, turning it on. Uh, but you know what? You could you could leave it on. I mean, if they're going on vacation for a few weeks, uh, you know maybe just leave it running. Just say, well, that's okay. Just don't check your emails because uh, they they have 80 days to get them. So if they don't get them till a month from now, that's that's fine too. But you can stop them. You can pause them if you need to. Okay. Uh, but now when I uh, go there now you'll see it's uh, to turn back on as soon as they click it starts it back up again but watch this now they bought a house so instead of me disabling them what I want to do and I don't want to delete them I want to get rid of them out of the auto emails I want to move them into the save search box here okay so to do that I just click on one I go to settings and I go up here turn this auto email into a save search I give it a name, uh, Canyon Gate, probably name it the same thing, Canyon Gate between um, uh, 800 and 1.1 million, okay? And then I save it, and it is turned off. And I can do the same, uh, same thing with Seven Hills, come up here. In fact, uh, what I'm going to do, so I don't have to type it in again, I'm just going to copy it. And when I hit that magic button up here, it'll turn it into a save search, give it the same name, uh, and save it. And both are now out of here, and they are back into my contacts uh, under uh, Jenny, but they're save searches, not auto emails. Okay, and they're also under save searches here. See right here for Jenny uh, Sanderson, and if I scroll down, there it is. There's the other one. Uh, something else, one last thing here, and maybe we can open this up, uh, some questions here, is uh, if I go up to contacts, now that I'm done with Jenny and, and, and Kevin, I don't want to delete them out of my contact list, but these are my active contacts up here. What I could do is check mark it and set them as inactive. Watch what happens to them. They look like they disappear. They're not in my list. You know why? Because they're not active contacts. Over here, they're inactive. So I can show you my six inactive contacts, and one of them is Jenny and Kevin. I could show just my actives, which doesn't have Jenny and Kevin, but I could show all 18 of them, and now the inactive ones are, are lightly grayed out, and the darker ones are my active ones there. So that's all my contacts. Okay? Uh, so that might not be a bad idea, but that way you can just focus on the ones that you're currently working with, where your other ones that you're no longer, the more historical ones from the past, you can make them inactive, okay? Um, it's also good to know if I pick someone here, let me see if I get someone as an auto email, uh, Neil and Pat, okay, see they got an active auto email. If I go into Neil and Pat, check mark them, you'll notice I cannot set them as inactive because they have an active auto email right here, okay? So I can't do it, and I cannot even delete them. I can't delete them because they got an active auto email here, okay? So, but if I pick something else, like Kathy here, she doesn't have an auto email, um, so I can delete her or set her as inactive because she doesn't have that. Because uh, some people do this. Some people select all their clients, and they're trying to delete them all or a bunch of them. Well, you can't do it if they have an active auto search here, and you can't set them as inactive. So I thought that's very well uh, worth mentioning there. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate your guys' time. We do have a few minutes left.